Dear Father in heaven, we glorify your name for your great blessings upon us and that uh, you have loved uh, humanity with an everlasting love. It is evident for sending your son to die for us. And so in this hour, speak to us that um, we may be able to understand your will in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, uh, good day. Brothers and sisters, wherever you are tuned in, and I'm glad to welcome you to another episode in this uh, series of Minneapolis 1888, and that uh, we may rekindle the Reformation, we may be able to understand the will of God, or uh, we may go forward to do His will and uh, induce others to come to the standard that the Lord is needing us to come. So, welcome to our presentation today and um, as uh, we continue with this series of uh, Minneapolis um, we are looking at uh, the aftermath of everything and this is um, a simple uh, definition of sin according to the Bible the simple biblical definition of sin and I pray that uh, we will be blessed together. Uh, what is the biblical definition of sin? That is the question that um, we would like to address in a few short uh, minutes, and then uh, uh, the Lord will bless us. Uh, in the book of 1 John 3, 4, whoever committed sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Sin um, whoever committed sin transgressions or transgresses also the law for sin is the transgression of the law and uh, I know that um, uh, the also between transgression and the law has uh, uh, many of our brethren many of the scholars have tried to deal with that and uh, I won't go into that much but uh, I'd just like to look at uh, a few things here and there. And so, identifying particular sins versus defining what sin is. In Proverbs chapter 21, verse 4, uh, we read that um, a high look and a proud heart and uh, the plowing of the wicked is sin. So this is identifying particular sins and defining what sin is. In that um, we look at, uh, uh, we, we dissect what uh, specifically is included in sin. Uh, Proverbs 24 verse 9, the thought of foolishness is sin. Now remember a fool has said in his heart, that there is no God, and that is going against the transgression. Thou shall have one. Uh, thou shall have only one God. In the book of Exodus, chapter twenty, thou shall have no other gods besides me. It's the same as thou shall have one God. And so, Romans fourteen twenty three, Paul said, "Whatsoever is not of faith." is sin so sin is faithlessness sin is foolishness sin is wickedness sin is proudness being pride a sin is a high look this is what we are calling identifying particular sins in james 4 17 therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin sin is a state of doing nothingness when you are supposed to be doing something. I think that I have just uh, reversed the issue. And so 1 John 5, 17, all unrighteousness is sin. Anything that we'll do that is not righteous, it is sin. And then looking at the definition of what is sin, or definition of what sin is, 1 John 3, 4, whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law for sin is the transgression of the law. 
what are the characteristics characteristics of the law after looking at the specific sins and uh, the definition of sin and i just said this is a simple biblical definition of sin because uh, i don't want to go into complex things um we should be able to uh, be able to do these things or uh, to present them in a way that a little child would be able to understand them and uh, comprehend what is being spoken the law of god what are the characteristics of the law um and so romans 320 for by the law is the knowledge of sin this is the characteristics of the law that um uh, the law is also knowledge of sin uh in romans 7 7 i had not known sin but by the law so we are seeing that sin is some kind of knowledge in Proverbs 6, 23, for the commandment is a lamb. The law is not only knowledge, but it also a lamb. The law is light. The law is a reprover. We read on, for the commandment is a lamb, and the law is light and reproofs of instruction at the way of life. So there are reproofs of instruction. The law is a reproof of instruction too. Uh, Psalms, the, the division 119 Verse 96, I have seen an end of all perfection, but the commandment is exceeding broad. Uh, and so in uh, the law of Jehovah is exceeding broad. Jesus plainly declared to his disciple that the, this law of God may be violated in even the thoughts and feelings and desires as well as in the word and deed. And so... Uh, Sin is lawlessness. Whoever transgresses the law uh, commits sin. And the law of God is so broad because um, sometimes we uh, narrow ourselves to what is uh, in Exodus chapter 20. But when you come to the book of uh, Matthew chapter 5, Christ goes into a broader way of uh, defining that law in a way that um, the Jewish people had never thought about it. In the law, you find that thou shalt not commit a data. And people think only of the act of a man who is married going with the, a woman who is um, married. But then we are told that a data is not only that act of them participating in a sexual intercourse, but even the thought of uh, going ahead to do that without doing it is already adultery. And so the law of God is exceeding broad and so when we do the definition of sin and we say that sin is also the transgression of the law we are not just uh, talking about the actual acts that are, are involved in transgressing the law but even the thoughts and the intents of the heart uh, that uh, violates the principles of love which forms the foundation of uh, the law of God actually they are included as the transgression of um, the law if they are included as sin and so in uh, mind pass uh, that is in mind character and personality volume one page uh, 32 in one chronicles 28 9 for the lord searcheth all the hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts and that is what i was saying that uh, it is not just the outward uh uh, working of against the law that is seen, but uh, even the inward uh, 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 deliberations of things which are against the principles of the foundation of God's government, which is love, actually they are counted as the transgression uh, of the law. In Review and Herald, March 18, uh, March 8, 1870, and uh, just uh, allow me to do this. Uh, um, allow me to do this in uh, review and herald review and herald uh, review and herald uh, March 8, 1870 we are told the law of God is the mirror to show man the defects in his character the law of God is a mirror to show man the defects of his character. Romans 7, 12, wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good, God and his law. 
The law is the transcript of God's character. It presents his righteousness in conduct with our righteousness. That is Revian Herald, July 25, 1899. The transcript is a written or a printed version of material originally presented in another medium. In Leviticus 11.44, For I am the Lord your God, ye shall therefore sanctify yourself, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Again in Deuteronomy 32, verse 4, He is the rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. In Psalms, Psalm, in Psalms uh, the vision 34, verse 8, all taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. And this is just the definition of uh, the law so that we may have a better understanding of the definition of sin, the way the Bible puts it. Uh, in uh, the Great Controversy, chapter 29, The Origin of Evil, page 493, our only definition of sin is that given in the Word of God. It is the translation of the law. And you have seen what is the law of God. It is holy, it's just, it's a transcript of his character. And so whatever falls short of the character of God, whatever intents and thoughts that are against the thoughts and intents of God uh, can be, and uh, they, they lead to the outworking principle against the government of God can be classified as sin, but the only definition of sin that is given in the word of God is the transgression of the law of God. Sometimes we complicate the issue so much. Bible Echo, November 5, 1894, paragraph 3. Now, I know what somebody may ask that uh, because I have said the statement that uh, whatever is against the intents and the thoughts of God can be classified as the transgression of the law. And then you have in the Garden of Gethsemane, um, in the Garden of Gethsemane, we have Jesus saying that um, if it is possible, let this cup pass uh, uh, pass uh, away from me, but uh, not according to my will, but according to your will. And so here is Christ trying to uh, 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 go or against the will of God, but actually it's not going against the will of God because there is a negation. Nonetheless, not according to my will, but according to the will. Um, although the intentions of his heart or the desire of his heart is that um, uh, he may not drink of the cup, but um, actually his will is submitted to the will of God that he may go forth and uh, be able. And so he didn't rebel. And so that is uh, how I can just come the ball on the issue that um, uh, Christ always lived to do the will of God. That one we must remember. It is... Um, are totally different from where a man uh, even does things and uh, it is in a mournful way. It is um, just to do because there is no other way. Otherwise, he could not have done it. That is uh, something so different. And so uh, we read, there are many ideas in the world as what is seen, but what does the word of God define it to be? John writes, whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Without the law, we have no knowledge of what is sin. God's law not only covers every deed of outward life, but also penetrates to the intents and purposes of the heart. So we are not just looking at the outward life of a person to say this have transgressed the law, but God, who understands the heart of man, penetrates even to the intents and the purposes of the heart. And, you know, he finds sin in us, even though there have been not an outward action, but God can be able to detect sin by our intents and purposes that are hidden from the human eyes. And so that is why in Ecclesiastes we are told that um, uh, even our thoughts shall pass before the bar of God. In Testimonies, Volume 9, page 267, uh, we read that um, those who have allowed their minds to become beclouded in regard what constitutes sin are fearfully deceived. Unless they make, um, unless they make uh, a desired change, they will be found wanting when God pronounced judgment upon the children of men. 
they have transgressed the law and broken the everlasting covenant, and they will receive according to their works. And so we should be able to allow God to sanctify our mind and um, uh, the cloud that uh, really and the mist that occupies our mind may be removed so that we may uh, uh, understand what constitutes sin, uh, lest we uh, be deceived, lest we be fearfully deceived. In manuscript uh, release volume 9, page 249, paragraph 1, you need not to talk about getting along without any law and yet know what is sin is. The only definition of sin given in the Bible is sin is the transgression of the law. And uh, you know what? The reason why actually um, the brethren of uh, uh, Sunday keeping uh, movement um, have a problem is uh, taking one of the law outside the law of God one of the commandments out of the law of God. And this now destroys the definition of sin and uh, victory over sin cannot be accomplished when we have a wrong definition of sin because we shall look at other things as if they are not sin when in actuality they are sin. A terrible doom awaits the sinner and therefore it is necessary that we know what sin is in order that uh, we may escape from its power. John says, whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. 1 John 3, 4. Here we have the true definition of sin. It is the transgression of the law. How often uh, the sinner is urged to leave his sins and come to Jesus, but, but what? Uh, he has not uh, been told uh, what actually sin is. He has not been told what sin uh, is. And uh, this um, actually leaves the people confused when they are told that uh, you must overcome sin. And then uh, in that uh, overcoming sin, they are not told uh, uh, what actually sin is. They are not told uh, what sin is. And so we must come to a point that uh, we shall have the right ideas of uh, what um, constitutes sin, what constitutes sin. In uh, First Face with the Real Gospel by Dennis E. Preby, pages 37 and 38, this is um, what uh, we read. This is uh, what uh, we find uh, in that uh, booklet. If sin is our nature, then we have no control over that and we are sinners by nature. If sin is our character, then we do have control over the choices we make and we are sinners by choice. And again, he continues to say, on the same basis, if sinlessness means a sinless nature, then that is possible only at the second coming of Christ because we retain our sinful natures until that time. However, if sinlessness means a sinless character, then that is possible whenever we choose not to sin whenever we choose not to sin again he continues to say our definition of sin is the determining factor if we mean nature when we use the word sin then there can be no sinlessness until the second coming of christ if we mean character when we use the term sin then sinlessness is a possibility before the second coming of christ and before the close of probation i may add Leaving us an example, what did Satan know about the flesh that Jesus received? We read, clad, and the, this is from Review and Herald, December 15, 1896, paragraph 6. We read that uh, clad in the vestment of human of humanity, the Son of God came down to the level of those who wished to he wished to save. In him was no guile or sinfulness, he was ever pure and undefiled, yet he took upon him our sinful nature. Clothing his divinity with humanity, that he might associate with fallen humanity, he sought to regain for man that which, by disobedience, Adam had lost for himself and for the world. And for the world. Again, in a manuscript release, volume 20, para, volume 20, page 324, the Son of God who 
is the express image of the father's person, became man's advocate and redeemer. He humbled himself in taking the nature of man in his fallen condition, but he did not take the tend of sin. And so if uh, we have to say that sin is nature, then uh, Jesus Christ, there is no way he is exempted for being a sinner from being a sinner. By taking upon himself man's nature in its fallen condition, Christ did not in the least participate in its sin. He was subject to the infirmities and weaknesses of the flesh with which humanity is encompassed, that it might be fulfilled that was spoken by the prophet Isaiah himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. He was touched with the feeling of our infirmities and was in all points tempted like as we are, and yet he was without spot. And uh, how was Jesus tempted? To get a clear understanding of the nature which Christ received at birth, we must understand how he was tempted. The manner of his temptation reveals the type of nature in which he faced them in. The Bible says that Jesus was tempted as we are. It is believed by some person that Jesus had only innocent infirmities such as hunger, thrust, and tiredness, and therefore tempted in accordance with these infirmities. And he was only tempted in the wilderness. But uh, continued on, in Hebrews 4.15 we read, For we have not an high priest which cannot be tied with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like us. We are yet without sin. If Jesus was tempted as we are, what is temptation and how are we tempted then? Temptation. Temptation is the feeling or emotion uh, emotion act in accordance with an instinct or desire which is contrary to the will of God, the risk or possibility of sinning. And then in James 1, 4, 15, we are told, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. When it is finished, bringeth forth death. And so sin is a germination of the evil seed. And that is what Christ suppressed. All the evil seeds, he suppressed them. He did not allow them to germinate. And uh, we read on in uh, James 1.13, just when Jesus was on earth, he operated as a human and not as a God. James 1.13, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither, tem neither tempted he any uh, man. Matthew 4, 1, then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Why was it necessary for Jesus to be tempted as we are then? Um, Satan declared in signs of the time, January 16, 18, and 6, paragraph 2, Satan declared that it was impossible for the sons and daughters of Adam to keep the law of God and thus charged upon God a lack of wisdom and love. If they could not keep the law, then there was fault with the lawgiver. Men who are under the control of Satan repeat these accusations against God in asserting that men cannot keep the law of God. And so uh, Christ took our nature, our fallen nature, so that um, um, he may be able to demonstrate that all the sons and daughters of Adam can keep the law in this nature, the fallen nature. So sin is not nature. Uh, that is what uh, I'll insist Again, in a sense of the time, January 16, 1896, paragraph 2, Jesus humbled himself, clothing his divinity with humanity, in order that he might stand as the head and representative of the human family, and by both precept and example, condemn sin in the flesh, and give the lie to Satan's charges. He was subjected to the fiercest, fiercest temptation that human nature can know, yet he sinned not, for sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is not nature. Uh, sin is the transgression of the law. And so Christ in human nature, which is a fallen nature, was able to overcome the evil one. And so uh, when uh, we are looking at the, the definition of sin, we must not go beyond what actually is revealed uh, in the word of God, but we must take the word of God as it is and then uh, uh, allow it to interpret itself. 
And uh, in this short snippet, uh, uh, I hope that uh, we will continue building on that as we look at uh, how he was tempted um, in the wilderness. And we may have a clearer glimpse of uh, what uh, the scripture continues uh, uh, defining uh, what sin is. Otherwise, uh, may the good Lord be with us and uh, may we continue pressing on the front. The Lord is soon coming and uh, he wants a people who will understand his will, a people who will understand his will and walk in that will. And he is able to succor all them that come unto him, seeing that uh, uh, he was tempted as we are tempted, yet without sin. And so in the next term, uh, segment in the next presentation I'll be looking at um, how was Jesus Christ tempted we have just gone through a short presentation on uh, uh, what is the bi biblical definition of sin but we shall go deeper into this when we go to how was he tempted so may the Lord blessings rest with us and uh, may we continue praising together and uh, working out while there's still time, for the time is now short. There is a great work to do, but uh, a short time in which to do it. And how I pray that the Lord will impress our minds that uh, we need to pull our efforts together. We need to bring all the resources together and be able to do a work that has been languishing that we may show forth the marvelous, uh, uh, the glory of the Lord and the marvelous light in which we have been called as the sons and daughters of men. There are many people in dark places which have never heard the word of God. And uh, may the Lord help us to move even as the clock is moving. The final events will be rapid ones and uh, we have no time to lose at such a time as this. Otherwise, may the Lord bless us and continue guiding us, shall we pray. Our dear Father in heaven, thank you for uh, all the time that you give us to be able to study your word. And uh, may your word have an entrance in our heart that it may find a heart of flesh, a soil which is rich, that uh, it can produce much fruits. Help us to remain in thee, that you may remain in us, that we may bear much fruit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.